Yes, two main themes really, international terrorism and the resurgence of Russia in international relations, which happen to be the two courses that I teach on the undergraduate uh, program here at Peace Studies. And they come together really in the North Caucasus and specifically of course in the war in Chechnya. Um, my research on that culminated in the monograph uh, Chechnya, Russia's War on Terror. With the end of the paradigm war on terror, I think emphasis has switched to how Russia and Chechnya in particular has coped with the post-conflict period in containing and countering Islamic extremism. And what I'm concentrating on very much at the moment is the specific person of Ramzan Kadyrov, who is the very controversial young president of Chechnya, his relationship with first President Putin and now President Medvedev, and what lessons using a comparative approach can be learned from uh, his success in inverted commas of, of um, dampening down, if you like, the impact of Islamic extremism in that explosive part of the world. Yes, I suppose you could say that my field work was done when I was much younger in that um, I don't go to Chechnya now to study the situation on the ground. Um, and indeed, in the internet age, I don't go to Russia probably as much as I should. But uh, with a very, very extensive set of networks, um, use of the internet on a daily basis, attendance at international conferences, I feel that I've keep my finger on the pulse of what's happening both in Russia and Chechnya. As I say, the comparative approach is quite useful. For example, my experience of the um, situation in Northern Ireland can be applied to see what lessons have been learned, haven't been learned in Chechnya, and to see whether the post-conflict resolution in Chechnya actually offers an alternative template to other conflicts in the world um, alongside that of Northern Ireland. A uh, particular emphasis, for example, is on the extent to which Ramzan Kadyrov can be compared to warlords in other, um, other post-conflict or conflict societies like um, Afghanistan, Iraq, Lebanon, etc. And to what extent he's more of a nation builder. Um, and again, I'm drawing comparisons from history and from the present day world to try and actually find out where he can be categorised and most importantly what lessons can be learned for the international community uh, from, his, um, uh, from his record so far. Well the case study is Chechnya but I'm, I'm very aware that the real interest in the world at the moment is the resurgence of Russia uh, as a whole. So, to some extent, I'm seeing to what extent Chechnya was the platform for P Putin to build his power and to facilitate the resurgence of Russia, and to what extent, in a way, um, Russia's application of its vertical power in, in Chechnya actually reflected where Russia was heading anyway. So it's it's a it's a bit of a horse in the cart situation. Um, what particularly interests me about Russia at the moment, and Chechnya fits very neatly into this, is the concept of Russia being a Eurasian power. Now Eurasian is a concept with which we are familiar in the West, but not really in the Russian context. And um, we've got the upcoming um, five yearly congress of all the people in the world who study Russia, East Europe and, and uh, Central Asia coming up in Sweden and I'm involved in three panels on discovering really what Eurasianism is from the, from the Russian perspective. And um, it helps explain why Russia comes out with these rather strange concepts for us, like sovereign democracy, um, the near abroad, um, spheres of privileged interest. And I think it sort of undermines the very important thing that Obama said today, just today in, in, in Moscow, that uh, Russia is and should be considered still a regional power, and in some regards a world power, and that uh, it should be treated as equals rather than being talked down to. So 
the other major project I'm working on really is to try and find out what Russia really wants. Not to be judgmental, but to use the contacts that I've built over over 40 years from you know, managers of football teams to the first woman in space, you know, to actually ask people, the movers and shakers and decision makers, um, how they actually see Russia developing in the next 10 years. As I say, not actually judging them on that, but actually trying to find out exactly where Russia sees itself going.